Welcome to Rema for today with missionary Andrew and prophetess Winnie Nanga. We're glad you're watching. Amen. Uh, Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1 and verses 8. The Bible says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written thereof. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shall thou have good success. I want to share with us this morning about the snare of destruction. The snare of destruction. You remember the words of Jesus to Martha, where he said, Martha, Martha, you are troubled about many things. But one thing is needful. So what was Jesus telling Martha? There are things that are taking your attention that are not supposed to be taking your attention. You need to focus. Praise the name of the Lord. And you remember Joshua also as they were crossing uh, Jordan. He told the people before they crossed. When you see the Ark of the Covenant that was being carried by the priest, when you see the Ark, so what does that mean? You are not supposed to be bothering about many things, but your focus was supposed to be the Ark of the Covenant. You remember Moses in the wilderness when the children of Israel were beaten by snake, and he had to make this serpent of bronze and lifted it up. The Bible says, whosoever looked at it got healed. But others who are concentrating on their pains and the way they were beaten, they never received the healing. And listen, church, the enemy, the enemy can cause many things to distract you. And the devil does not, I mean, distract you in just any other hour. He desires to distract you when your hour of breakthrough is at hand. When something great is just about to happen. That is when he will bring distraction of all manners. And may the Lord help us to keep focus. May the Lord help us to keep focus. And distraction is putting your attention on something you are not supposed to be doing. Putting your attention on something you are not supposed to be doing. And distraction is also getting away from something you are supposed to be doing. But you get away from it. And I want to say this. God loves everybody. And almost everybody else has a plan for your life. And if you are not careful, you can be distracted by the many plans that people have for your life. Amen. God had a plan for Joseph. According to Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plan I have for you. To give you a future. And it is not a plan for destruction. I have come to honor God for who he is. I have come to appreciate that God is not evil. I have come to appreciate that God cannot sit down and decide on how he will torment you. But I have come to a conclusion that it is the desire of God for every child of God to live a very victorious life. In every area of your life, God plans victory. 
Amen. So kushindwa has never been in the plan of God for you. Destruction has never been in the plan of God for you. But the enemy will use people or many other things to distract you. And sometimes the bait is very enticing. Oh, it is very enticing and very nice. And pole pole, you can be distracted. And I'll show you from the scripture. It was a time that many people were supposed to be enjoying glory and fruitfulness. And through distraction, the enemy was able to remove them from the plan of God for their life. And if you are not careful, Distraction is not a simple weapon of the enemy. He even tries to use it to distract Jesus from when he, when he was using Peter. He said, hey, you can't die. How? Yeah? To remove him from the pain that God had ordained was the only way for him to bring redemption. Potiphar's wife, as much as God has a plan for Joseph as a preserver of his generation. And if you study Joseph, every time he's telling his brother, come near to me, come near to me, it's like I have your destiny. So that tells you there are some achievements, some breakthrough you will never get if you keep on putting spiritual distance. I know it's a time of social distance. But there should not be spiritual distance. From relationship that God has ordained for you. Remember in Genesis 45 where he say, come near to me. Then when he's sending them away to bring their father, he say, you will come and stay near me. You will come and stay near me. It was ever his appeal to them. And as much as he was a preserver, as much as he was a preserver of the continent of Africa from hunger, Potiphar's wife had a plan for him. Amen? So young people, there are people who will have a plan for your life. But there is the perfect plan that God has for you. Delilah had a plan for Samson. Although Samson was a deliverer and a mighty deliverer, in fact a Nazarite. And I don't want to go to the price the Nazarites paid to be Nazarite. It was a tough price. But Delilah had a plan. And what was the plan? To hand him over to his, the people he was supposed to destroy. And they ended up gouging out his eyes. The old prophet had a plan for the young prophet. Remember the young prophet was told, as you are going to prophesy, greet no one. So there are times greetings can be distractors. Yeah? You greet people for 30 minutes, one hour, eh, chatting, hi, hi, what are you doing, eating, what, ugali, and then, and you spend a whole hour greeting one another. The time that you are supposed to be putting focus and strength on some things. Saul had a plan for David. When David was going to fight, he was supposed to fight with the armor that God had ordained for him. But... Saul gave him a number that was so heavy to carry until he would not move. And he said, I can't use this. I'm throwing it away. Pharaoh had a plan for Moses. Oh, he was not taking Moses to school for nothing. He was not giving Moses food for nothing. No. He had seen the future of Moses in Egypt. But what does the Bible say? Moses turned from all these things. He turned. When he became of age, the Bible says he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh. So, there are names that you can be given and they distract you. You didn't say an amen. I'm saying there are names you can be given and they distract you forever. Forever. From what God had ordained for your life. Amen. And it takes humility to say, I will not be called the, 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 the son of Pharaoh. 
I will not be called the Messiah. I am not. My name is a voice in the wilderness. Praise the name of the Lord. Pharaoh had a plan. But Moses turned away. It was a distraction. And the Bible says he forsook the pleasures of Egypt. Please, I don't know whether sometimes you sit down to meditate on the kind of a life in a palace. Then you go behind some bush somewhere to become a shepherd. That adjustment is not easy. It's not easy. Praise the name of the Lord. So you can imagine Moses from there to the backyard of the desert where nobody knows him. And the following morning, somebody who had fans that were doing this to him every day, and when he says water, six servants come to a place where Jethro says, where's Ikachini? Kwenda ukachunge baka jioni. It was not a simple adjustment. But he looked at those things as distractors. And he turned his back forever, forever to them. Amen. Amen. When you avoid the battle you are supposed to face, you will find yourself fighting a battle that you are not equipped for. This is the battle you are supposed to face. And you are not equipped for this. For example, 1 Samuel 25. When Abigail is meeting David, what does he say? David, the only battles you are equipped for, they are battles of God. Can I get that scripture? They are battles of God. You are not supposed to be fighting battles of fools because you don't know how to fight them. Yeah? It's like Abigail was saying, I am the one who is anointed to handle fools because you are not supposed to kill fools. You are allowed to go, I mean, to allow them to go with their foolishness. And you see, Abigail knew that because he never took a sword to kill Nabal. But the following morning he said, do you know what you are doing was dangerous? Do you know if I never intervened, you'll be dead by today? But David was not equipped. In other words, I'm saying, David was not equipped to fight the battles of revenge. And avenging yourself can be a distractor. Can be a great distractor. Where you don't sleep Thinking of how you will also hit back. How you will prove a point of who you are. You know this is what David was, not, was going to do. Yeah? I want that, that scripture with the battle. You know? He said you are, you are to fight the battles of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Revenge has stopped many from progressing. And the enemy has distracted many people. To go and revenge instead of following the purpose of God. Please, look at how Jesus was so focused. He would not revenge on anyone. Anyone. Revenge can be a great distractor. Do you remember Job? The commander who had made an exploit uh, from... Uh, when, when, when David came into power and he asked, who will be the first one to defeat the Jebusites? He said, I'm the one, a giant that was daring. And when he defeated them, David made him a commander. That is why promotion does not come without a price. Promotion will not come by proclaiming that now God, uh, I, am, I am going up. Huh? And you make all this, you know, Pentecostal jargon. I am climbing in Jesus' name. And now I go up to the next level. And I climb this other place. And I go to, the, hey, it comes with a price. It comes with adjustment. It comes with a courage to face what others are running away from. 
It was an instruction. It was a, a meeting like this. Where David declared. Who is ready to raise the standard? And everybody coiled the book. Who is ready to be the first one? There is a position in the spiritual realm that is supposed to be occupied. Who will occupy it? And some people said, eh? I don't want to risk the Jebusites. Na mingine akasema, eh? Nilipata promotion juzi, sitaki. But Jacob, I mean, Job said, I am ready. And he defeated. And he was made a commander. Please, even before Jesus was given the name above every other name, there is a price he paid. He became sin. He went to the lowest before he was lifted to the above. Promotion does not come without a price. Promotion does not come without raising a standard. It can never happen. You have to raise a standard for yourself. Amen. So I'm saying, Joab now is a big man. You know I studied Joab and my heart grieves. This man is so helpful to David. So, so helpful to David. But what distracted him from being in the next government of Solomon. Revenge. When his brother was killed. By Abner. He carried the grudge all along. Until he killed Abner. And when he killed Abner. The commander who was in uh, David's army. He limited his progress. And what distracted him. Revenge. Where are people who will be slapped to this place and they give the other side? Where are the people when they are asked for the robe, they will give the, the belt? Where are people who are forced for one mile will go two miles? Revenge is a bait. And this is what was distracting David. Look at this. Please forgive your servant's offense. For the Lord will certainly make a lasting dynasty for my master. Do you see? The enemy brings destruction when something very precious is just about to be released in your life. Now see what, I mean, this, I believe the spirit of God, just the way in First Chronicles chapter 12, the spirit of God came upon Amasai. Now the spirit of God came upon uh, Abigail. To remind David what he's supposed to be doing. And to walk away from destruction. And that's why I say, don't undermine the bait of destruction. David was completely distracted here. How do you take 400 men to go and kill one man? Somebody who had killed a lion. Somebody who had killed a bear. And somebody who had killed Goliath. Did he need 400 men to go and kill Nabal? No. But you see the bait was now making him put all his strength on the wrong things. And he said, please forgive your servant offense. For the Lord will certainly make a lasting dynasty for my master. Yani mungu anataka ufanye vitu vya kuadhiri vizazi. But revenge distracts you. God wants to do a generational work in that your family. But you cannot drop the offense of what your sister or your brother did to you. Or even what you are, how your father abused you. And God has made you a repairer. And a founder of making new foundation. But you still remember how you were not taken to school. When God wants to make an everlasting dynasty. Yakwamba in generations to come. There are things that you will have conquered forever. Yeah? There are territories that God has positioned us here for. And then we allow ourselves to be distracted by nonsense. And not make an altar for generations to come. Because dynasty for my master. Because he fights the Lord battles. Let no wrongdoing be found in you as long as you live. 
May God raise many Abigails who will turn people from destruction and make them come back to the cause of God in your life. People who will tell, I uh, mean, people who will say, come back to the place of prayer. Come back to the place of holiness. Come back to what you had seen from the beginning. And do not be distracted. May God raise people who will tell people, come back to your marriage for the sake of generations to come, that they will not have to fight this battle. Come back to your home and begin fighting for your family. No wonder the Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Amen. My point was this. When you don't fight the right battle, you will fight a battle that you are not equipped for. I pray that somebody will have understanding. When Samson would not fight the battle to deliver the children of Philist I mean the Israel from Philistines, he became a toy in the hands of Delilah. Just a toy. A helpless toy. A deliverer was enjoying lullaby on the laps of his killer. And here they are giants of faith. People who can do exploits for God. But destruction has made them toys. To be played with by anything. Destruction can make you a toy. When God had made you a principality, and that is where you're supposed to be. But you are bothered about many things. When God wants to do an everlasting thing, but destruction has removed you. Look at your neighbor and ask them, by the way, what removed you from prayers? Seriously, what removed you? Ask them again. What removed you from the, the zeal you had? I knew you. What removed you? <laughs> what removed you? So, <laughs> when Esther <laughs> is just a Mrs. Hazarus and so distracted with that, she didn't know. In the spiritual realm, she was a deliverer of her people. But she was so lost in this Mrs. Ahazeru's thing. And being the queen, until she forgot there was an assignment. Even blessings, sometimes they can be distractors. David became a distraction. It is bad. It removes you from the place that God has placed you. And it brings you down. <laughs> Let me ask you. David, a man who is doing such exploits, and everybody is following him, and all the women are singing about him. Was he a man to be looking at the fence? And then he tells some boys here. You know, in the village those days, people used to do that. I believe the Mrs. Kiongo's time. When a, ma a man wants you, anakuja kwa face, anatumwa kwa fence, na rafiki yake. Atu kiona akipita hapa. And then, uh, you know, these people cannot... Relate to that because you have phones. For us, we did not have. So it was Kehoni generation. You know, when people are, are passing by. Imagine. Imagine the levels that distraction can remove you from. You do unbelievable things. Something that nobody can ever think that somebody of your caliber can do it. 
when you leave the mandate of God in your life to go on a fence somewhere to be calling people you are supposed to be protecting you have to keep on your lane you have to keep on your mission when you get distracted your dream is aborted unless you come back there are people who will the enemy will just bring into your life to remove you from your main course from what god ordained for your life the devil knows what to use to distract you because he knows you very well amen now Destruction number one. I have said, no, it's number two. I've said revenge. 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 I've quoted Joab and David. But at least David overcame by the help of Abishai. But Abner, Abner, I beseech you by the mercies of God. The Bible says vengeance belongs to God. It belongs to God. Don't be lost. And when God comes to avenge, you even have mercy on those people because he can deal with them in a way that you have mercy and say, please God, stop. I'm okay. Walk away from revenge. Walk away. Because sometimes revenge will make you fight the very people you are supposed to be protecting. You are supposed to be protecting your husband. But you become revengeful. Yeah? You are supposed to be protecting your wife. But you become very revengeful. The very people you are supposed to protect. And this is what even brings to witchcraft prayer. The people that you are supposed to be praying, God bless them. You are saying, Marohu na marohu ka, marodhira, maronyaga. I mean, the very, very same people. Let me tell you, it is better to have a blessed enemy than an enemy amepigika. Ata kuzumbua zaidi. The reason why Esau could not trouble Jacob many times is because he had his own cows. And that is one reason why you should say, even for my enemies, bless them. When they are so blessed, they will have attention on their blessings and they will not pull them. Thank you for watching Rema for today.